What's up, everyone? Welcome to Bill Bruns and Dragons. I'm your host, Bill Brun Bafflestone. So today we're having another episode of my Deep Dive series. Today looking at Chain Lock Familiars. This is a video that I've been meaning to do for a long time as a companion piece to my Advanced Familiar Tactics video, which I think is one of my best and will be linked in the video description below. I highly recommend people that use familiars watch it so that you know how to fully leverage and optimize the familiar because they are amazing. But obviously chain lock familiars are even more amazing. And I recently started playing a warlock, my Molbron Dowlock stone build in a West March server called the Forged Concordance, which I think is super awesome and I'm having a great time in. So the links for that will also be in the description below. Feel free to join me there and we can adventure together. In any case, I have been crushing with my chain lock familiar. I'm currently level three. And uh, yeah, I'm very excited to talk about chain lock familiars and tell you about how super amazingly awesome they are. So without further ado, let's do this. So the way we're going to do this is first look over chain familiars from a general perspective. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about two of the really great invocations that you can get for it, the investment of the chain master and voice of the chain master. And then I'm going to put up a chart that I made and we'll talk about each of them more in depth. So one of the things that I really love about chain lock familiars is that they officially have hands. A lot of DMs are going to rule that they can handle objects better than can normal familiars. Now, personally, I argue that normal familiars can handle objects perfectly fine. In my opinion, clutching branches and prey and stuff isn't really all that much different from handling potions and wands and stuff, but I do get that this is controversial and is going to be table dependent, so your mileage may vary. But in regards to chain lock familiars, they can definitely handle magic items, potions, poisons, and objects. I mean, they are super fantastic for offloading concentration via magic items. To be able to leverage their action economy with a magic item is so good. And it doesn't have to be amazing. It can be something like a Wand of Magic Missiles or a Decanter of Endless Water or an Ever Smoking Bottle, right? All of these uncommons, you just offload them to a familiar and they can use their action to do it. That is a huge power boost in 5th edition. Chainlock familiars also offer much better durability than normal familiars. They can actually take a few hits, which a normal familiar definitely can't. They are super fragile. Now, admittedly, the sprite is not very durable. It's just a step above a regular familiar, so not nearly as durable as the others. But this durability can be really good if you have investment of the Chain Master. That gives a resistance to all reaction that is really nice. I'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Now, the Imp and the Quasit come with a stack of resistances and immunities, including the very best one! Non-magical bludging, piercing, and slashing. Yeah, they got that silvered weapon rider on there too, but who cares about that? This is just so good. And they get other resistances too, and the imp gets fire immunity, which is super good in some situations and with some combos. Like if you're ever in environmental hot areas, like with lava and stuff, or if people are throwing down fire bolts, fireballs, wall of fire, flaming sphere, all of that is great because your imp is totally immune. And the Imp and Quasit are also immune to poison, so that's also really good in some situations and with some combos. For example, Stinking Cloud or Cloud Kill. Everyone knows that BBEGs and casters in 5th edition love Cloud Kill, right? And also keep in mind that if it ever actually gets hurt, you can dismiss it and resummon it with only an action. And it is disposable. If it dies, you just resummon another one. It's always so nice to have a disposable summon that you can use for various dangerous tasks. Now, chain lock familiars are surprisingly solid in terms of adding offense and defense, especially in tier one, and particularly if they've got investment of the chain master going. That gives huge attack buffs. Again, we'll talk about that in a minute. But both the imp and the quasit offer a really strong DPR that is excellent in tier one. And even though it doesn't scale all that well, it's actually pretty epic at levels three and four. Last time out, my level 3 character did like 35 damage one round and like 39 damage the next round just with an attack sequence out of my imp. That is amazeballs at level 3. And again, it doesn't scale all that well, but some of the other forms do because the pseudo dragon and the sprite offer bad DPR, but they do inflict riders that are actually pretty good and scale fairly solidly. Now, unfortunately, most of Familiar's available offense is attached to poison. 
And that's not good because poison is the fourth most common resistance. About 30% of all creatures are resistant or immune, and it's spread pretty evenly throughout the different CRs. Even low CR creatures can have it, like undead or a lot of beasts like snakes and scorpions and stuff, or constructs. So that's just always part of the deal when you are dealing with poison, and it is going to be problematic at times. But I've honestly taken it on a couple of undead missions, and it was still pretty effective just from the stinger, and I was supporting with Eldritch Blasts and stuff. So over the course of a thousand battles, it's still really an impressive offense, I think. And if they're not immune, man, it's really nice if you've got the Pseudo Dragon or the Sprite up, because those inflict the poison condition with no end of turn save. That is actually pretty solid in this game. And even better, both can inflict the unconscious condition, which is amazeballs. Fifth edition really does not have all that many save or die spells. It's usually save or suck just a little bit. So an impact like that, even though it's low probability, is really good. And in fact, if you're using the pseudo dragon, it's really not that bad at all because it has a better save penalty versus a normal save DC. It just inflicts a minus five penalty. And it's also a one hour duration relative to one minute for the sprite or the quasit. Whereas the sprite save for unconsciousness is a static DC six. And that's not great considering that it's a constitution save, but still even a low chance of unconsciousness is good. And the more important get is that poison condition with no end of turn save. That is pretty solid and is going to be very much appreciated by your marshals who are being attacked by poison creatures because they're probably not going to get hit. And in my opinion, this is good even in tier two plus because if you inflict a poison condition on a high CR creature, that is going to reduce its high CR creature attacks. So it scales pretty good. Now note only the sprite gets a ranged attack and it's a pretty solid one. Basically does no damage, but does give those poison riders. And so it does make the sprite good. It is super fragile relative to the other forms, but by getting that ranged attack, it does make it viable. The Quasit also gets a scare ability once a day. That can be pretty good. One of the only things they can do that's not attached to poison. And of course, the chain lock familiars that can turn invisible can use the help action without incurring opportunity attacks, just like you might expect out of your owl. Now let's talk about the superior senses of the imp and the pseudo dragon, which open up fantastic combat combos because both can gain perfect obscurement. If you pair the imp with darkness or the pseudo dragon with any heavy obscurement, they are going to get perfect obscurement for attacks at advantage, being attacked at disadvantage, and they can't be targeted with sight spells. Oh, so good. If you're adventuring with people that use heavy obscurement, or if you use it yourself, because of course warlocks are famous for using darkness, man, chain lock familiars can be good. Plus the pseudo dragon also has a passive perception of 18, and that is pretty sneaky awesome, because they have keen senses, which gives them advantage to perception, which gives them a plus five bonus to their passive. And warlocks have low wisdom and no access to the perception proficiency. So they might need it. I get that you can pick up perception through a background, but sometimes that's not available. I actually was not able to start with perception on the warlock that I'm playing right now due to the rules. Another sneaky little benefit to the imp's devil sight in particular is that it eliminates the minus five penalty to passive perception for dim light. That's actually the big downside of dark vision. It's much easier to sneak up on you and you don't really notice all those secret doors and stuff. So that does come in handy on a day to day basis. And remember that the caster can use these senses themselves with an action. That's all it takes for you to look through the senses of your familiar for a round. And so that means the caster can literally operate entirely through the familiar as long as it's within 100 feet. If you play it correctly, that means the caster can remain safe if combat starts, even if you're currently in the exploration phase, because that's usually how combat starts, right? You're exploring something and then the DM says roll your initiative. And if you're operating through your familiar, then it's your familiar that's on the field of battle. And you're probably, you know, a barrel or something in the corner in the last room because you comboed it with minor illusion. At least that's how I'm playing it. And it's like pretty super amazing. And speaking of the exploration phase, let's not forget that chain lock familiars are sensational at scouting, infiltration and overland travel. I mean, they've got invisibility and fly most of them. And then some of them toss in shape changer and or a solid or good stealth score so. That's a crazy good combo for scouting and infiltration. I do want to point out the specific amazing synergy with Genie Warlocks because they get Bottled Respite and Sanctuary Vessel and there is incredible value for them in having a Chain Lock Familiar to handle the vessel. An ordinary familiar is way too noticeable and way too fragile for that sort of thing if you're really trying to hit that panic button. But a flying, invisible, durable Chain Lock Familiar is so good for that. 
Now note that the Imp and the Quasit both get Shape Changer, and that can confer fly or swim speeds. And there's literally no reason for them not to because they don't change their stats. They're still beastly combatants, but they just look like ravens or whatever. And that's great for the Quasit, which can't normally fly. So it just turns into a bat and now it's got a 40 foot fly speed. And it's good for the Imp because it can turn into a raven and that'll bump its fly speed from 40 feet to 60 feet. They can also shape change into spider or centipede form. And that allows them to be super tiny, 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 tiny which means they can get into the smallest little cracks. They're super hard to notice, even if they're not invisible. And even if people see them, they're probably not going to be suspicious of a spider crawling along the wall. So yeah, having the chain lock familiar gives you a huge bump in the terms of engagement. And I just love that. So not only are chain lock familiars pretty awesome in the combat phase and the exploration phase, they don't stop there. They're actually pretty helpful in the interaction phase as well. They can speak common and several other languages. And the imp actually has pretty solid skills at insight, deception, and persuasion. Remember that they are smart enough to operate independently without needing to be micromanaged. In fact, my familiar is smarter and wiser than my character, which is kind of funny at times. And they are excellent in a covert role where they can sneakily impact interactions or other scenarios because they can turn invisible and communicate with the caster telepathically. So if you're trying to cheat while gambling or create a distraction or use your imagination, it's really a nice little thing to have in your back pocket. And then there's the Sprite's Heart Sight ability. This is one of the most elite intel gathering options in the game. Learning an enemy's alignment is just so good and you practically can't do it with any other game mechanic in 5th edition right now. So getting that kind of intel can be key and clutch in a lot of scenarios in my mind. And remember that they automatically sense the emotional state without a save. They do need a save to figure out the alignment, but the emotional state is automatic. And oftentimes that can be enough to give you a little bit more intel. Now I do note that it requires touch, so you might need some misdirection and some invisibility and some stuff like that to make it happen. But if you, I don't know, shake a dude's hand, he's probably not going to notice the touch of an invisible familiar at the same time. So now let's talk about a couple of the invocations you can get as Pact of the Chain. Starting with Investment of the Chain Master. This is easily one of the best invocations in Tier 1 and early Tier 2. It buffs Chain Pack Familiars into elite combatants in those tiers and are still pretty solid thereafter. I told you personally how my familiar is crushing it in my game as a level 3 character. Oh, so good. Investment of the Chain Master confers five different powerful benefits. When you first summon it, the familiar gains a 40 foot fly or 40 foot swim speed which is excellent for the Quasit, as we said, it doesn't normally get a fly speed. And it's excellent for the Imp or Quasit that have Shape Changer because now our super tiny spider or centipede form can fly. Uh-oh, the flying spider, look out, spooky. And of course, a swim speed can be great in some scenarios. There are some adventures that take place on a boat or even underwater. Two, as a bonus action, you can command the familiar to take the attack action. And this enables two attacks per round at level three. Man, that's good. The way it works is that one, you use the caster's bonus action to command the familiar to attack on its action. And then the caster uses his action to command the familiar to make a reaction attack. The first one is from Investment of the Chain Master, and the second one is from Pact of the Chain. And if your familiar is not currently in range, the caster can use the ready action, which will trigger when the familiar gets within to melee range. And then you can use your attack action to command it to make its reaction attack. Which, by the way, is perfectly valid rules as written. There's no ambiguity to this. I thought there might be, but I read and it's actually pretty clear. Three, it makes the familiar's attacks magical. So that can obviously be good in the right situation. Four, if the familiar forces a creature to make a save, it uses your spell save DC. Oh, that is a fantastic buff that makes the various poison buffs and riders way more lethal. Especially the Pseudo Dragon, because that inflicts unconscious if they miss the save by five or more. So yeah, the higher you get that save, the more unconscious creatures your Pseudo Dragon is going to create. And then finally, five, the caster can use his reaction to confer resistance to all when the familiar takes damage. And that obviously is great to extend the durability of our familiars, especially if you're using the Pseudo Dragon, which doesn't get resistances like the Imp or the Quasit. And it's obviously amazing to essentially double our familiar's hit points. So yeah, bring that on. All of these benefits combined make the investment of the Chain Master Chain Familiar an elite combatant in early tiers. 
and it's still pretty decent in higher tiers. I mean, a Warlock doesn't usually have great bonus actions, so even a Sprite is going to give a Warlock a decent bonus action option that can inflict a poison condition with no end of turn save. I'll take it. The last invocation I wanted to talk about is Voice of the Chainmaster. This is a really sneaky good invocation, and it has amazing synergy with Investment of the Chainmaster, because Investment of the Chainmaster makes your Imp or Quasit or whatever a fearsome combatant, and Voice of the Chainmaster allows you to operate it from unlimited range. I mean, the caster doesn't even need to be in the vicinity. He can operate entirely from the familiar, even in combat. The familiar can sense and talk and interact and engage in combat completely independently. And yet the caster is in full command, is in full awareness of what's going on because of the telepathic link. Reread what I just wrote and think about that for a minute. That is crazy. At level 3, a Warlock can be completely unkillable. That is insane. He just operates through his familiar, sees everything his familiar sees, can talk through his familiar, can drive his familiar in combat, never leaving the couch. Oh my god, that's just so, so good. At level 3, man. And remember the dismissal and resummoning thing? It only takes an action, it's not limited by distance, so your familiar can be on the other side of the world, and you want to do an extraction, and boop, he's back. That's pretty crazy. Okay, so now what I'm doing is putting up a chart where I've listed all of their abilities side by side and grouped them sensibly so we can kind of get a sense of how they compare to each other. And they're all pretty good. I have to say the Quasit to me is kind of the stepchild here. I would probably never use the Quasit, but I'm currently using the Imp and it's amazing. And I'm currently using the Pseudo Dragon because sometimes I adventure with people that cast Fog Cloud and then the Pseudo Dragon is amazing. And I'm probably going to end up using the Sprite at some point because I'm going to be moving on to more powerful summons and not involving my familiar in direct combat, but to be able to pump out a ranged bonus action attack that inflicts a one minute poison condition with no end of turn save, that's pretty solid support for your party. So when it comes to the Imp, I think this is the best form for melee combat. It has the highest damage output of all of the possible forms, and it has the best hit points and immunities. Plus it has that fly speed, which is always amazing. And it has Devil Sight, which gives it fantastic synergy with darkness, which of course Warlocks are casting all the time. And it's also great in regular darkness, because it's not subject to the perception penalty for dim light, as we discussed. And it's 120 foot distance, so you can get that perfect obscurement versus creatures that only have dark vision 60. And then of course they have Shape Changer and Invisibility at will and fly, so they're just like amazing scouts and stuff. The Imp particularly, I think, should often be in Raven form because you really don't lose anything. You lose hands, that's about it. And on the plus side, you gain a fly speed of 60. So, kind of a no-brainer, right? Versus a fly speed of 40. Next, I'll talk a little bit about the Pseudo Dragon, which I really like because it's the only form that gets blind sight. That means you don't need darkness and you can use any heavy obscurement. And I think that makes it a great option for the Meridlock because they get Fog Cloud and Sleet Storm. And I've actually been adventuring with a Meridlock, and when he throws down a Fog Cloud, my Pseudo Dragon just destroys people. Ah, oh, I love that. Note that it's the only one that has an impressive passive perception and good senses that make it a good terms of engagement defense. And that's kind of what it gets for not getting invisibility at will. It's the only one that doesn't get that, and that is kind of lame. But you can't have everything, and that's kind of the flip side to having great passive perception and great senses. So it's nice to have options, and if we need to detect things, we can pull out the Pseudo Dragon, and if we want to be undetectable, we can pull out one of the other ones. Remember, the Pseudo Dragon has the best poison. Unconscious at save DC minus 5 instead of save DC 6, and it's one hour duration, and it is the fastest flyer with that speed 60. So again, if you're using Fog Cloud, oh, it's such a good combo with that. Then we have the Quasit, and again, I don't really like that one as much. The poison allows an end of turn save, which is the only familiar poison that allows one. And it's just a one minute duration, so it's not like the most impressive poison. And Scare is a nice non-poison special attack, but it's just one time a day. Now they're just as good as scouting as imps are. And one cool thing about Quasits is they might have synergy with Summon Greater Demon. Keeping in mind that an uncontrolled demon, right after it makes its save and breaks control of the caster, will not attack another demon. It only attacks the nearest non-demon. So that might help in this case. However, there is actually a question of whether a familiar is actually conferred the demon tag. Because remember, this is a game about technical rules, and that is actually pretty ambiguous. There is no definitive answer on that one, so you are literally going to have to ask your DM. And frankly, I don't think it's going to be a big deal either way, but just a little something I wanted to point out. 
Uh, and then finally the Sprite. It's the only form that gets a ranged attack, and it's terrible damage, but the poison condition can be good. Again, inferior to the Pseudo Dragon Poison, but it's still really good. And they get Heart Sight, which I think is one of the best abilities in 5th edition. Again, it's practically the only ability in the game that still acknowledges alignments, and that's actually really, really good intel. So, Heart Sight, man, it's really good. And it also has the highest Stealth. Stealth plus 8. So, combo that with that Invisibility at Will plus Fly. It's the best form for scouting and infiltration. Unless you need the special senses of the Pseudo Dragon or the Imp. So that's about it, and I have to say that I am really super impressed with the game construction of these familiars. Now that I've sat down and analyzed it in depth, it's really cool the way they've arranged it. They offer a really wide variety of different abilities, but they mix it up and everyone is a little bit different, and each one is a little bit better in certain scenarios than others. And having all of those options available, yet not all at one time, really makes it tactically elegant and calls for some thinking and some strategizing and those are some of the things that I really love to do in Dungeons and Dragons. So that's about it. I really love the chain lock familiars. Let me know what you think about them in the comments below. Let me know any cool tactics that you have used them for because again I'm playing a character that's got a chain lock familiar so hit me up with all those tactics folks. I love to surprise people at my table with, with clever stuff and I don't need to be the originator of it. I will happily take it from you guys. In any case, thank you so much for watching. This has been Bill Bronze and Dragons. I'm your host, Bill Bronze Bafflestone. See you next time.